Hey everybody, working on the DWC before my uh, lettuce seedlings get to be too uh, be ready for it. So here we go. What we did, I kind of liken it. I'm liking it a little bit better than a floater. I just stacked uh, three of these core plasts on top of each other and drilled out. That's enough for one, two, three, four, five. That's 15 heads of lettuce or kale, or whatever. And I cut a notch out for the input. What I think I'm gonna do, you can see here, the water level, I hope you can see it in the glare. I'm gonna try to get some shade there. It's about a quarter of an inch. That's with the riser that I cut, I built for all the, so the riser can be used for uh, draining, fill and drain, whatever. So I think I'm gonna do, it's right, right there I can touch it there I'm gonna think I'm gonna give this one up for a plant and cut a bigger hole here and I'll get a plug I can put over it from the hydro store but um, I want to be able to adjust the riser without unscrewing it I don't want to take this on and off all the time so if I make this hole a little bit bigger I'll be able to get in there and I can pop this out Put a shorter riser once the roots start getting really long. I don't know if that's necessary because you know with a float system it's floating right there in the water. And I don't know if you can see it. The bubbles. I do have a long bubble bar in there. There's the feed. I'm tripping over it. I gotta dig a small trench and tuck it in there. And I'm also gonna, gonna have to get a uh, larger air pump. Or just another uh, air pump. Because the one air pump I have here located in there, let's go over there. I have it right there. The only thing it's feeding right now is the two fish tanks and they each got a bar. And I want to put in another air stone in here. So I think I'm going to have to buy a really big air pump and see how much that will cover. And maybe dedicate this pump just for these guys, I don't know. But if I try to turn the valve open anymore for the DWC, it takes all the air from these guys. And I gotta get that to lay flat because all the air is coming up to that one part. Whereas this is laying flat and you can see it's not pumping out a lot of air. I wanna get more air into these tanks. I can probably keep working on my uh, Venturi and try to get a Venturi working out of this, which I might do. as also they're just they're just kind of like mindless little drones just sitting there they don't do much oh well that's the fish so that's what we're doing here um it's more of a test because i'm, I'm going to be putting air bubblers in these two beds here as well and i want to get an air stone up here well i'm going to start up there Put an airstone there so it gets it all over and that's why I might not I might not bury that I might just run it along so I can tap off and then hmm my mind's gone now my original intention was to even put a half inch PVC along here and have that have taps on it so uh, that's still in the works too but I wanted to get this one at least going it has air so when the lettuce is ready to be moved out of here, which is going to be soon, be ready to go. All right, we'll see you in the next clip. Hey, I'm just going to dig this out and put it over in a dust bucket. Show you the roots that grew on this guy. And it's like all over, all spread out. Look at that one. This hasn't been in there that long, but yeah, that's pretty empty, huh? So we're going to put them in here, and I need both hands, but I just wanted to show you the root growth. That's about uh, maybe a week, two weeks most, and that thing was a little baby, a little baby from, uh, yeah, um, a pack from Home Depot. Anyway, I'm going to put them in, and I'm going to go in and eat. Just wanted to show you guys the roots from that thing. Yep. Oops, I did it again. 
see the wet spot? It's not a good wet spot. And my carelessness and not checking things. Now let's go show you the sump tank first. I lost again a lot of water again. You know, it, it was almost down below the pump there. As you see, I just pulled off the, the float valve and I'm just filling it now. Because uh, I want to get the water level up. I mean, I came out and basically just noticed it in time because it was right at the top of the pump. What I did was I was uh, I already had these two set up and so I was basically setting this one up and I put the uh, these off. I had put the air stone in and basically just put the cover on, turned on the water and let it go. You know, like I did with these two. That I had no problem there. Came outside and the pipe there, instead of going directly in there like it is now, and it's supposed to be, was up kind of resting on top. And so half the pipe was just squirting water straight out. And yeah, I have a little bit of a leak. I'll silicone that later. Um, uh, there we go. And this pipe is angled. Weird. I don't know what's up. I have to do some tweaking. But it's back to normal here. And uh, yeah, it's just stupid mistakes. Um, when, I, when I turn something on like that, you really need to check everything. I should have waited until it got to a certain level and watched it drain and made sure it was draining properly. Instead, I just turned it on and I went inside to play Fallout and uh, do some other work. And I just happened to come out with my muffin and to casually walk the garden and check it and saw, noticed that. And like I said, just in the nick of time because the water level was uh, down at the bottom, just at the top of the pump. So anymore. It would have run dry and uh, been a catastrophe. Yeah, even the tank goes down a little bit. It's filling up now. There's the fishies. All these fishies are happy. I did um, put in a new pump. I got a little bit of larger pump. Feel the heat off this. So this pump controls just the biofilter. And I have one line going to the tanks and teed off. I'm going to change that later and bring both tanks home. So I have a valve for each tank. And that is warm. And this one here. It goes around. I'm going to cut these still. But it goes around there and you can see the little valve. And... And then those go off and it feeds air stones to those three beds, DWC beds. And then I have one air stone popped up inside for the strawberries. And what I probably might do down the road is pop another line and put in a air stone midway. There's no, I don't know, just to help them out. Uh, only other thing that big to happen is I did lose one of the bluegills. I don't know how we died, but one died. But I expect that when you get a bunch of fish like that from a fishery, I expect one or two to die. I don't know why. The others are happy. Even the koi are starting to come to the top to feed. Not so much when I'm right here. They're still a little scared of me, but when I toss the feed in there, it kind of collates underneath here because of the air bubbles. And they'll pop up here. And I'm loving the increased air in both these tanks. And I still have to fix that. I don't know if you can see it, but a little bit of algae is developing right around the window. Not on this one. This one's fine. But this one is. So what I did in or I'm working on it fell over because I got lazy. Is I cut a piece out here and I'm gonna get a strip of wood and screw it there so 
it's covered up by a shade cloth. That should help. So, yeah, you saw the air bubbler in here. I'm beginning to hate the long blue ones. I got one of those in here, but you can see it's not even operating all the way. And they break way too easy. In fact, I had one broken by the time I got home. I didn't get to use it. This one's screwed down, but this one's got a blue one in there, and it, it's doing fine. I need to clue that, too, because you can see a little bit of algae forming right there. And I need to top off some hydrotin here. Because uh, I don't have enough. Because it's starting to see water when it gets full. I don't want that. That's how algae is born. So I'll do that. Um, maybe later today. Get some more hydrotin clean and put in there. I do have a couple berries forming. They look kind of like uh, deformed berries. Might be too early. I should probably pick them off. I'm going to pick this one off. Throw it in a warm composter. Yeah, these aren't these aren't going to be anything. So I'll show you the. Uh, I don't know if you can see the air bubbles in there. It's got a little tiny stone, but it produces a lot of fine bubbles. So that's it for this clip. Our little catastrophe and a little update. So the only thing I'm waiting for here now, I put one out here just because I felt like it. You know, but the other, they're not really ready to come out yet. I'm gonna give them until next week until uh, hopefully I see some roots coming out of the uh, rock, rock wool. Yeah, and then I'll start moving them out here. We got clear skies for the next week. Uh, looks like a slight chance Saturday night for a little bit of moisture, but um, that's it. I'm rambling. I'm just kind of going on now. Got lots of flowering on my tomatoes here. I'm hoping some early tomatoes. I dosed with Epsom salt uh, a couple days ago. I'm probably going to do another dose of iron here in the next day or two. And then I have some kelp powder coming in for, what is that, potassium? No, phosphate. Yeah, one of the piece. So... I'm going to head in and get some more work done. Glad I got out here when I did. So, today's lesson, moral of today's video, check everything before you walk away. <laughs> make sure everything's filling properly, make sure everything's draining properly before you decide to uh, go play Fallout. Alright guys, talk to you later.